Making transfer deals in Football Manager is personally my favorite thing to do in the game. For some of you, it might be tactics. For me, it's always going to be transfers. I love making a deal, but the transfer market can be quite a tricky place to navigate, even if you're an experienced player, not just for beginners. Whether it's accidentally selling a player for a little bit too cheap or spending too much on a player, overpaying, and then maybe not getting the best results out of them, there's a lot of things that can go wrong in the market, but today I'm going to go guide you through how to master transfers in FM24, loads of tips and tricks for you. So hopefully this will be useful for all kinds of players. So we're ready to kick off this tutorial, but first I want you guys to help me out, head into the comments and let me know your favorite transfer trick. If it's something that I miss in the video, I'm sure it'll be really beneficial to everyone watching to see all of these tips from you guys in the comments down below. And whilst you're heading down there, make sure you smash the like button and subscribe for the daily football manager content that we do. Now, now, let's get right into it. You can see we are Manchester United manager here one year on and we're going to use this save as our example save to guide you through some tips and tricks you can do in the market. Now this is from a rebuild that I did on my own channel linked in the description if anyone wants to check it out but there you go don't worry no more YouTube plugs today but yes we are one season in just in the transfer window 3rd of August we've got a huge budget of 50 million quid and 1 million pound of wage budget but don't worry about that whether you're a non-league side or a club like Manchester Manchester United, all of these transfer tips will still apply. So let's guide you through the first thing that you need to know to master the market, and that is in every save, as early as you can, go to transfers and hit the clauses button. A lot of you might know about this area of the game, but there's a lot of experienced players who have commented on videos before, having no idea this existed. And basically what this is, is it's a list of all the clauses on any transfer you've ever made. On this page, there's information about Fred's transfer to Fenerbahce, about our incoming transfer, Morton in Friendrup and the clauses to do with him, but we're bothered about none of these. We're only interested in the ones that have the currency symbol next to them because that is a transfer clause that you can either buy or sell and that will either help you save money or make you money instantly for your transfer budget. For example, if they're a player at your club like Altai Bayandir, you can look at the clause in question and buy the clause if you think it makes sense, but I'm not really interested in talking about them today. Instead, look at the ones where the player is no longer at your club and you will find usually some easy cash that you can access right away. Take Anthony Alanga for example here. We're apparently owed 20% of the profit of the next sale of Anthony Alanga from Forest. Valued at about 20 million quid. If they sold him on that would be a 5 million pound profit and we make 1 million pound back which is great but realistically would I rather have 1 million quid in two seasons time or straight away get 800 grand added to my budget? I'd want the 800 grand because it tends to be in your saves that you'll want that money early on to start moving your squad round and by the time you get a few seasons in, you might not even be spending all of your budget anyway. So for me here, I'm going to sell that clause. You just click that button. And now, as you can see, there is an email in our inbox. We've been given £805,000 straight to our transfer budget. Now, obviously, United are a Premier League club. But if you're a team, say, in the third division of English football, check this out. There might have been a player in the past who moved on for big money and you can make some easy cash from it. Just as Manchester United manager here, I'm now going to make another £2 million if I wanted to selling this clause clause on James Garner. Again, make sure you weigh up the pros and cons of selling that clause and see if you actually want to do it. But we've just added two million quid to our transfer budget. I'm going to make just under a million from selling this one on Mate Kovar and then Ethan Laird. I'm going to make 2.3 million on. Of course, like I say, analyze each clause individually. But just from doing this, we've accessed an extra five million quid that we can now spend on the player. So that is my first transfer tip. Make sure you check that clauses page out, particularly in season one and season two of your save. And you'll hopefully get Get some extra cash to spend. Now that we've got that cash in the bank though, before we talk about some things you can do when signing a player, let's look at some tips when selling a player. Now it must be said, this year in Football Manager, it is easier to sell some of your Deadwood players that you're trying to get rid of by using the new button that is hire an intermediary to sell player. Basically, some agents will go out for you and sell a player on whilst taking a little bit of the cut of that sale. And that's great, but that isn't exactly the way that you want to sell your players. In fact, you should really be only using that as a last resort. So I'm going to 
going to guide you through my step-to-step -step guide on selling players, giving you some tips on the way of what you can do to maximize the value of a transfer. The first thing to note is sometimes you've got to look at the transfer valuation and realize you're not probably going to get that money. This is our valuation of Tyrell Malassia here at United, but it isn't necessarily the valuation of what other clubs would have of him and would be willing to pay. Now, realistically, 24-year-old promising young defender with a few years left on his deal, 20 million quid is not bad, but when you see he only played eight times last year and all of them were bench appearances too, there is not going to be much interest in Malassia at all. As you can see, currently there are no wanted symbols on him or anything, but you can actually generate some interest before offering him out to clubs to get an idea of how much money you might receive for him. So 20 million, I'm going to guess this valuation won't actually be accurate of what other clubs want to pay for him. But the way to check, the first thing I do when looking to sell a player is don't click offer out, don't hire an intermediary, speak to his agent about market interest. You're then going to choose the bottom option where you're going to say, we're considering selling Malassia, but only at the right price. Now his agent will tell us any interest in him and the valuation of said interest. So even though he had no wanted symbol, supposedly if we were willing to sell him for 11 to 13 million, we'd have interest from the likes of Roma, Ajax, Sociedad and PSV. Now we have a choice here. We can say that's too low. I don't want to sell Malassia. Or we can think about it and go, you know what? 11 million isn't too bad. And you can invite the offers in. As you can see, after that conversation, his valuation has now shifted to the updated market value that we were given by his agent. And now we should start seeing some interest come in and some bids being made. But let's imagine that the agent told us there was no interest in Malassia. What would you do next? Well, you could go to the offer via transfer room button and offer him out with a flat fee, unspecified, and see what kind of transfer comes back. Sometimes you'll get an offer, sometimes you won't. If you don't get an offer, only now would I go ahead and transfer list a player by actually going to transfer status and then transfer list. That way you'll start getting some more teams interested because they know they'll be able to get him at a bargain price. And then, and only then, if I still didn't get some offers, I would ask for an intermediary to sell our player. And here's exactly why, because you could see a few minutes ago, our agent was telling us that we could make a sale for about 30 million. I think it did actually say it would be a loan to buy option. But either way, after asking the intermediary, which like I say is last resort, only if you want to move a player on and do no work yourself, they're telling us the best we can get is a transfer loan deal for under the value of 5 million. And they're going to take 10% of the fee. So this just shows you only use this as a last resort when you really can't move the player on. If we hadn't have done that, we would have been able to get the bids that we got earlier from our agent of around 30 million. Of course, from there, Malassia has to want to go, but that just shows you that you might be selling players for far cheaper than you should be doing. Now, if you have a situation, as we mentioned, though, where no one's interested, of course, use hire an intermediary to sell a player. And it's also pretty useful if you're looking to just get wages off the books. Take Victor Lindelof, for example, on 170 grand a week with only a year left on his contract. I'd be asking the intermediary intermediary to sort out a deal because it tends to be if you go through that route the deal gets sorted pretty much instantly pretty much guaranteed but just at a way lesser fee so just bear that in mind if you wanted to move someone on quickly then maybe go for the ask intermediary option but I really do think use it as a last resort even though it's a really handy tool you're not going to get as much for your players and that's a big mistake that a lot of people make so selling players that's the path I would follow ask the agent then offer him out then transfer list him and then and only then ask an intermediary but we're done with selling players. Let's move on to the exciting part. And that is buying. Now, before we get into my process with buying players, I'm going to quickly give you a few tips that you can do when searching through scouted players that you might not know about. Firstly, make sure you tick this doubtful option on the transfer cog here. That will still only bring up players that have an interest in your club. But if you had it set to what it was originally, if slightly interested, you'd get less options on here. The people that are doubtful, you can see some extra names come through, don't necessarily really want to join United, but could be convinced. So if you do want more options in your transfers, then make sure you click that button. Another a quick fire tip that will save you lots of money and get you some great free transfers is when you're searching for players hit this search button go to contract status and then one year so do this in the summer and you'll find anyone whose contract is up in one season now what you can do is see if there's anybody that you like the look of Jonathan David let's say now at this point there's no guarantee he won't extend his deal with Lil there's also no guarantee he will be available as a free agent in a few months time but we can influence that if you're interested in a player go ahead 
declare interest in him, it's going to make him a little bit more unsettled at his club and it's going to make it a lot less likely for him to sign that contract extension at Lille and then come January we'll be able to get some of these players on an approach to sign deal. What I want you to do from here once you've found some players that you like is add them to a shortlist. It can be your main one or you can make a new shortlist for players whose contracts are expiring. If you do this what will happen is in January you'll get an alert from your assistant in the email box saying these players contracts are expiring and you can now approach to sign them for completely free. If you don't know when a player's contract gets into the last six months as long as they're not a domestic player you can go ahead and offer them a deal without a transfer fee. Take some of these guys that aren't playing in Europe. Their contracts are up at the end of December so within six months of where we are currently we can go ahead and approach to sign them. So like I say if you added a bunch of these guys to a shortlist you'll be notified when there's only six months left on their deal which means you can get them for free. A lot of people on my channel ask me how do you get so many great players on a free? This is exactly what I do. I declare interest in some of the players I want, keep an eye on them and even if five of them do sign a new deal there'll be a couple that by January will be available to approach as a free agent. Side note another very quick tip to do with transfers but isn't necessarily related to the rest of this video. If you want to find a player that's very similar to another player you like, Tate Debo, for example, you can go to comparison and find similar players. That way you'll find players who have similar attributes to the player you've looked at and you might find some bargains in there. There you go, there's this man here, Igo Ugbu, for about 9 million quid. We could scout him and see if he was worthwhile signing. But let's get back to our transfer tips when buying players. Now we're going to talk about the actual negotiation themselves. Let's say we wanted Aaron Hickey from Brentford here as an example. His valuation is 55 to 67 million. Before you go ahead and make any kind of offer to Brentford, promise me you'll do this. Go to transfer, go to ask agent about availability for two reasons. One, we'll be able to save money on his contract eventually, but two, we'll get an updated transfer valuation. If you don't know, this valuation will have been guessed by your scout when they scouted him. So asking the agent now will give us a much clearer example of what his current transfer valuation is. So let's take a look. It might shift slightly. I always go for this one where you say we're looking at a few players right now as opposed to saying, yeah, we really want to sign Aaron Hickey just so we can kind of like be a bit standoffish about it so we can get a better deal. But I don't know exactly if it has a huge effect. It's just something that I always do. And we can see that he's got a valuation of 54 to 67 million. If I'm right, that was the valuation we had. So we were okay. Now we know what kind of ballpark region to play with. But it's always great to do this because the amount of times a player has a 50 million pound valuation and then a year later I go and ask the agent and the agent says, actually, you can sign him for 20 to 25 million. And if I didn't ask his agent, I could have bidded 50 million and lost out on loads of money. So yes, do this. You'll find a rough valuation of the player and you'll also see his wage expectations and his playing time expectations. Never just say yes. Always give a go at saying no, I want his playing time down a little bit or I want his money down a little bit. So for example, I'm going to ask for the wages on Aaron Hickey to go down and there you go. Now he only wants between 72k and a little bit more. So we've managed to narrow down that bracket a little bit further if we do eventually go to sign him on the contract negotiation front. So we've got an accurate valuation and we've managed to lower a player's wage demands before we even got into the transfer negotiation. This is where you can be a little bit sly if you want to. We mentioned before about declaring interest in a player. What I like to do if I know that I want a big money transfer and I want to get some money off it is if I offered 54 million pounds here for Aaron Hickey, we're going to see, I imagine, that Brentford won't take that. They want a lot more. They want upwards of 80 million quid here, which I'm not interested to pay. So what I'm going to do is I could negotiate that down, I assume, to about 67 million. Um, I don't want to pay that. What I would try is offer the lowest valuation possible in that transfer value. So say 54 million. And then I guarantee Brentford would reject this. But before they even have a chance to, I'd send that and then I would go to Aaron Hickey and I would declare interest in him as a transfer target. Let's do it now. There we go. Straight away an email has came to our inbox saying Hickey is extremely keen on the move and that's what we want to see. When a player is really keen, now he'll see that Brentford reject a bid and he will get upset with Brentford. It's going to allow us to get a much cheaper value for him and it's good if you're planning for the future too. If you think you might want to sign Hickey in a following season, now is the time to start doing this kind of stuff because it's going to affect him mentally at Brentford. That might lead to him not signing a new contract, no new extension. His contract's going to have one year left on it next summer. This is a very extreme example example but you can see what we're trying to do trying to lower his valuation obviously sometimes you might just want the player straight into your club and you want to pay the 67 million but if you're trying to save some cash and you want to really really haggle it down this is a great move to do declare the interest in the player and you'll see pretty soon he'll kick up a fuss give it a month or 
so and suddenly Aaron Hickey hands in transfer request at Brentford 47 million we swoop in we take him we save ourselves a bunch of cash so there you go there's some transfer tips to help you master the transfer market in FN24 when it comes to selling and buying players with some extra tips sprinkled in there for you all hopefully you have enjoyed if you have smash the like button and remember to let me know your favorite tips in the comments that way we'll have a big bunch for everybody to read and we can all get better in the transfer market.